Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you a little bit today about our modern view of the atom. Our modern model of the atom is called the quantum mechanical model. Now, in the quantum mechanical model, we think of the atom as being composed of a dense, small, positively charged nucleus made of protons and neutrons. And that nucleus is surrounded by a cloud of electrons. Now, when we say a cloud of electrons, it's not a cloud in the traditional sense. In a sense, it's a cloud of probability. It tells you where any particular electron is likely to be at a certain time. And the idea that the electron occupies a cloud around the nucleus is related to the strange idea that an electron, while a particle, also has certain properties of waves. Anytime you contain or constrain a wave to a limited space, there are only certain waves that are going to be stable, certain patterns that are going to be stable. We call those standing waves. So when an electron is associated with a nucleus, it is constrained to a certain space. And the patterns that are allowed are described by its wave properties. The person who managed to come up with a relationship for those was Erwin Schrodinger. So we talk about Schrodinger's wave equation. Now, to solve Schrodinger's wave equation, we need three numbers. We call those quantum numbers. So there are three quantum numbers that are directly associated with Schrodinger's equation. They are the principal quantum number, n, the angular momentum quantum number, l, and the magnetic quantum number, m. The principal quantum number basically tells you the energy of the electron. It tells you the energy level. <coughs> the angular momentum quantum number tells you the shape of the orbital, the type of orbital. That is, it tells you the shape of the electron cloud. It tells you where the electron is likely to be. Because the angular momentum quantum number tells you the shape of the orbital, you'll also sometimes hear it called the orbital quantum number. The third quantum number associated with Schrodinger's equation is the magnetic quantum number. The magnetic quantum number tells you the orientation of the different orbitals, the different ways that you can turn them in relation to each other. So those three quantum numbers come directly from Schrodinger's equation, but to fully explain or fully describe an electron in an atom, we need a fourth quantum number. It is called the spin quantum number. The spin quantum number is associated with certain magnetic properties of the electrons. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the values that these numbers can take, and we're going to as I do this, I'm going to go ahead and relate these to a different way of specifying this that we're going to use when we write electron configurations. So the principal quantum number tells the energy level. So anytime you are adding things to a system, they will naturally seek the lowest energy level possible. So if, you're, if electrons are binding to an atom, they tend to go to the lowest energy level possible. We call that the ground state. So the lowest energy level is the first energy level. The next is the second, the third, the fourth, etc. So the principal quantum number n can take on whole number values that tell you the energy. The next quantum number is the angular momentum quantum number, also called the orbital quantum number because it tells you the shape of the orbital. That angular momentum quantum number always has to be at least one less than the principal quantum number. So if the principal quantum number is one, one less than one is zero. The angular momentum quantum number has to be zero. If the principal quantum number is two, one less than two is one. So the angular momentum quantum number could be one, but it has to be at least one less. It can be more than that. So if in the second energy level, the angular momentum quantum number can be 1 or 0. In the third energy level, the angular momentum quantum number can be 2, 1, or 0. In the fourth energy level, the angular momentum quantum number can be 3, 2, 1, or 0. Now, you heard me say earlier that the angular momentum quantum number is associated with a type of orbital. Each one of these numbers is associated with a specific type of number, type of orbital. If the 
Angular momentum quantum number is zero. This represents what we call an S orbital, which is spherical in shape. The electron has it in equal probability of being, being located at any angle from the nucleus. The next quantum number up for angular momentum quantum number is one. If the angular momentum quantum number is one, we call that a P orbital. If the angular momentum quantum number is two, we call that a D orbital. And if the angular momentum quantum number is three, we call that an F orbital. So, the principal quantum number tells you the energy level. The angular momentum quantum number tells you the type of orbital. Notice, in the first energy level, there's only one type of orbital. It's an S orbital. But the second energy level has two types of orbitals. It can be an S orbital or a P. The third energy level has three types of orbitals. It can be an S, a P, or a D. The fourth energy level has four types of orbitals. S, P, D, and F. Now, these different orbitals can have different orientations. They can be turned different ways. The magnetic quantum number tells us how they are turned. The magnetic quantum number is related to the angular momentum quantum number. It starts as low as the negative value of the angular momentum quantum number and goes up to the positive value of the angular momentum quantum number. So if we are looking at an F orbital, the magnetic quantum number could be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, or 3. In other words, there are seven ways to orient, seven ways to turn an F orbital. Whereas if we're looking at an S orbital, there's only one way to orient that orbital. There's only one way to turn. With a P orbital, the angular momentum quantum number is 1, so the magnetic quantum number can be negative 1, 0, or 1. There are three ways to turn a P orbital. And the last quantum number that we're going to talk about up here is the spin quantum number. The spin quantum number always has two possible values, positive one-half or negative one-half. 